Scientists and engineers have always turned to nature for inspiration, especially when it comes to building our homes, our roadways, and our cities, you name it. Sheer animal ingenuity has helped our civilization immeasurably. Ancient animal techniques help us to build our own dynamic structures, but animals are next level builders in their own right. From termite mounds you can see from space to underground rodent cities a quarter mile wide. Have you ever seen a sea of snakes? You're about to. Here are 15 of the most amazing nests in the world, part two. Number 15. Huge beehives. You would not believe the lengths people in Nepal will go to for this delicious commodity. Honey, liquid gold. Nepalese honey hunters make dangerous vertical climbs to harvest it. Bees are the largest honeybees in the world reaching up to 1.2 inches in length. And it's not just any old honey these bees are producing, it's called mad honey. Besides being hallucinogenic, it's believed to relieve hypertension and is a natural way to increase energy. As a result, mad honey ranks among the most expensive in the world. It sells for $60 to $80 a pound. To get the mad honey, the hunters climb dangerous heights, risking their lives to get access to the bees' nests. Driving the bees out with thick smoke, the honey hunter jousts tentatively at the nest, cutting the exposed honeycomb away from the cliff face. Once the honeycomb is safely in a basket, it then gets lowered to the workers below, a tradition that's provided for communities generation after generation. It's a delicacy in Japan. It's used in Chinese and Korean traditional medicines. And the spring red honey is the most sought after. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly. Number 14. Australian Mollyfowl Nests Birds are responsible for some of the most incredible feats when it comes to nest building, and these Australian mound building birds are no exception. Not only do they build these mounds, they're actually quite big, often 10 feet wide and over 2 feet high. Mollyfowl mate for life, and when it's time to lay eggs, the male is mostly responsible for building the nest using its strong legs to gather dry leaves and sand, and working the mound into formation. The female gets in and goes to work laying their eggs in a cavity in the top of the mound, which is then covered with more leaf debris. There's some science behind these burying of the eggs. Besides protecting them from predators, the vegetation eventually decomposes and generates heat, incubating the eggs. And the male fusses continuously with his temperature control duties. Depending on the temperature, he adds or removes more material to warm the eggs up and can cool them by removing and scattering the decomposing vegetation then scraping it back onto the mound. Chicks hatch unaided after about two months. They can walk as soon as they leave the eggshells and can fly within a day. Number 13. Ancient Brazilian Termite Mounds In Northeast Brazil, researchers studying these giant 200 million cone-shaped mounds sampled soil and found that the termites began building them almost 4,000 years ago and they spread across 56 million acres. The termite super colony, which spans an area the size of a Great Britain, has been under construction since the time of the ancient Egyptian pyramids. The amount of soil excavated is equivalent to 4,000 Great Pyramids of Giza, and it's the biggest structure built by a single insect species. However, the mounds are not nests. Rather, they're the result of the termites' slow and steady excavation of a network of interconnected underground tunnels. The termites over thousands of years moved huge quantities of soil and built approximately 200 million cone-shaped mounds. They're not ventilation structures, but simply piles of dirt. As the termites carved out networks of tunnels below the landscape, they carried the dirt up the central tube to the top of a mound and tossed it out. It represents a vast earth-moving endeavor. Each one is a waste point for their vast subterranean tunnel network below the ground, which they have used for millennia. It's a biological wonder, akin to those of the ancient world, but with a termite civilization that built it still living there today. Number 12. Golden-headed Cysticola cobweb sewing. A bird that sews? Wait, what? Not only do these birds sew, but they're known as the finest tailor of all birds. We'll explain. The golden-headed Cysticola is a species of warbler found in Australia and all over Asia. 
For its nest making, the golden-headed cysticola frequently stitches its nest together using spider threads. It constructs the nest by creating holes, and then it heads through the cobweb silk it finds and it sews the construction of the nest together. It's pretty amazing. The nests are built by both sexes, with the female stitching the nest together and the male giving spiderweb threads to the female. The bird constructs its nests in shrubs, grasses, and other types of vegetation, no more than 10 feet above the ground with the plants used to camouflage it. Three to four eggs are laid at a time and incubated for almost two weeks. After hatching, the female feeds the chicks and the male defends their custom-sewn nest, chasing away animals that come near it. A common inhabitant of grasslands and wetlands, their distinctive calls range from musical and melodic or more metallic buzzing accented with high-pitched tweets. So not only can these birds sew, they can sing too. Are they magic? Number 11. Trapdoor Spider Nests For starters, trapdoor spiders have eight eyes a pair in the middle and three on each side. They have powerful jaws and sharp fangs that stab downwards into its prey. Their bodies are thinly covered with hairs, and to make them even scarier, the trapdoor spider can run very fast. Oh, one more thing. They hide behind trapdoors they built themselves. Trapdoor spiders cleverly camouflage their trapdoor and lay out trip lines so that when an insect triggers it, they leap out in a surprise attack, dragging their prey into the burrow. Like this spider, named number 16, the world's longest lived known trapdoor spider in captivity. Number 16 built her burrow when she was young, and like all female trapdoor spiders, she was a homebody, never leaving. They build their homes underground in small burrows about five inches deep. They line their underground homes with silk, like the silk used by other spiders to make webs. Each burrow has a trapdoor with a hinge on one side that lets it open and close, about an inch across and the strands of delicate silk that surround the trapdoor are the trigger for the trapdoor spider to attack. Number 10. The Narcisse Snake Dens Canada's Narcisse Snake Dens are slithering sights to behold. Tens of thousands of snakes arrive each year to sleep and mate, and they pile into nests together in huge slithering piles of serpent sexiness. This snake den is a provincial wildlife park about 3.7 miles north of Narcisse, Manitoba and is the winter home of tens of thousands of red-sided garter snakes, the largest known concentration in the world of the red garter. They hibernate in the natural crevices and tunnels eroded into the porous limestone. It truly is a sight to behold, and not for the faint of heart. Each spring, the red garters emerge from their sleep to mate, then they leave and move to nearby marshes for the summer. 20 years ago, the snake population was dangerously low, so the Snake Pit's wildlife management established snake crossing tunnels under the roads leading towards a safer living area, and new road signs cautioned drivers to slow down for snakes. And the plan actually worked. The population of snakes in the area improved, and today the wildlife area has become a popular attraction for snake lovers worldwide. The videos of the snake piles are popular around the globe. Number 9. Montezuma Hanging Nest This amazing bird builds a hanging woven nest of fibers and vines high in a tree, a complicated yet beautiful and don't forget safe place to start a family. It's astounding to imagine how they do it. The Montezuma bird is a tropical bird, a resident breeder in the Caribbean coastal lowlands from southeastern Mexico to central Panama. And as you can see, they build nests quite uniquely their own, hanging nests. Females build these nests, which may hang three feet or more below the limb of a branch, and they live together in colonies made up of about 30 nests, but up to 172 have been recorded. It's thought that this long, deep shape protects the young from predators and prevents eggs from falling out of the nest in heavy wind. Montezuma birds try to build their hanging nests near wasp nests too. The wasps act as a buffer for the birds and guard them from predators. The wasps' stinging attacks deter both potential nest predators such as opossums, raccoons, and snakes, and from parasitic insects. So not only do they build incredible nests, but these birds are smart too. Come courting time, the male Montezumas exhibit their skills through an outrageous song and dance display. Number 8. Organ Pipe Mud Dauber you might find these unusual nests on the side of a farmhouse or a barn. The Oregon pipe mud dauber are the master masons of the wasp world. 
At about an inch in length, the OPMD is the largest member of its genus, and unlike other wasps who use existing structures to build a home, these wasps build their nests from scratch. They're near a supply of mud, the wasps pick up the mud with their mandibles, then form it into a ball. Then they take the mud back to the chosen site and mix the mud with saliva. Then they use their foreheads to smear the mud balls out, and this repeated motion turns the mud mix into a pipe about six inches long and divided into six sections, called cells. These pipes get clustered together, sometimes in groups of five to seven. When the females are satisfied, she mates, lays an egg, caps the cell with mud, and begins building the next chamber. These wasps may even evict another female from a nest and not above removing another female's eggs from a cell and insert her own. OPMD specialize in feeding their offspring orb-weaving spiders, and a cell will have between 5 and 20 of them for the larvae to nourish themselves with. Number 7. Texan Giant Spiderwebs Rare events called megawebs have been known to happen in Texas after very heavy rains. The temporary phenomenon involves hundreds of thousands of spiders living together in a giant spider web stretching across multiple trees, like the one that was discovered in 2007 at Lake Tawakoni State Park, 30 miles from Rowlett, Texas. This surprised many experts who had previously thought spiders only worked alone. Researchers believe that when a mega web is built, the different species of spiders come together because food is plentiful. Small flies that swarm near water above after heavy rainfall, attracting the spiders in drones. The number of spiders who called these webs home were likely in the thousands. Pretty scary thought, also pretty incredible the amount of teamwork these spiders exhibit. The Texas megawebs at Lake Tawakoni State Park in 2007 and in the Dallas suburb in 2015 were both the work of thousands of long-jawed orb weavers. Other species of spiders will join in. In most places where the orb weavers are food, adult females tend to live alone. But in parts of the south, they work together in maintaining webs, capturing prey and caring for offspring. Number 6. Australian Leaf Curling Spider This is how spider couples cozy up when you're a leaf curling spider. The leaf curling spider is found in woodlands and urban areas in the northeastern, eastern and southern states of Australia and it's special because of having a curled leaf at the center of its web in which it shelters in pairs, living together in the same leaf. Before mating, the female creates a separate curled leaf nursery hung in foliage nearby. These leaf curlers will scavenge for a good leaf and hoist it into position, and then using their silk threads they form a protective cylinder, silked shut at the top and open at the hub, and this gives them a great place to hide and hunt. With only their legs showing, feeling for the vibrations of insects and range, the curled leaf protects them from birds and parasitic wasps, yet disguises them from potential food sources. The male leaf curlers will take up with a female just before maturity, living on the opposite end of the protective leaf, and after successfully mating, the female builds a nursery nearby out of another curled leaf. Cohabitation like this may be a form of mate guarding because resident males challenge rival males that venture into the web. However, it's a very effective way to keep the leaf curling spiders safe. Number 5. Red Ovenbird Domed Nests The South American ovenbirds, also known as El Hornero, or the house builder, do not skimp when they create their home. Their nests come with a dome-shaped roof, which resembles a traditional wood-fired baker's oven, hence the name. It's the typical adobe technique. The nest is placed up to 20 feet above ground on exposed branches or sometimes on the ground in bare areas. The red oven bird's nest is constructed of mud and plant fibers. Although old nests physically last for several years, oven birds construct a new structure for each round of eggs they lay. Using clay or mud mixed with fibers, hair or straw, the male and female oven birds work together to build the walls of their nest gradually during the winter months allowing the tropical sun to bake the mud until it's rock hard. Then they build a narrow, curved entrance and dividing wall to create the breeding chamber, which the female bird lines with grass and feathers, a process which can take months to complete. Some nests have two entrances, whereas others have only a top entrance. Despite the work and the energy invested in such a nest, oven bird does not reuse the nest. It builds a dome nest, sometimes above the old one. Number 4. Weaver Ants in other tropical and subtropical woodlands, scores of different ant species may share a single tree, but there's little room for coexistence where insects known as weaver ants make their home, in Australia and in Southern Asia, the other in parts of Africa. 
They make their soccer ball sized nests among the branches by sewing leaves together. Using next level precision, the weaver ants create very strong ant chains by linking legs to pull and bend leaves into desired tent-like positions. The ants then use their own larvae to secrete a silk to stitch leaves together. These long-legged weaver ants aggressively dominate huge territories in the forest canopies that locals simply call them the tree ants. Each weaver ant colony inhabits from half a dozen to more than a hundred nests at any given time forming an ant city of boroughs and suburbs connected by busy commuter routes. A hierarchy of weaver workers and soldiers maintain and defend the nest, which spread from treetops to the forest floor, staying in sync through constant communication. Scientists have likened weaver ant communication to a type of language with primitive syntax. Urban planners examine the organization of ant societies too. Number 3. Prairie Dog Towns Sounds like a location in a western movie, doesn't it? Except it's not that at all. These prairie dogs actually build prairie dog towns. These black-tailed prairie dogs are found on the Great Plains east of the Rocky Mountains. These animals prefer fine or medium textured soils as these work best for building underground burrows, traditionally dry, flat, sparsely vegetated grasslands. They dig burrows close together to form colonies called prairie towns. And as you gaze into a field with prairie dogs, you can see their tiny heads popping out. It's hard to believe that they're connected through tunnels underground, usually U-shaped, that can go to 7 to 15 feet deep. All the different entrances allow for an escape route in the event a predator gets inside, and the prairie dogs cut down anything growing taller than about 6 inches to better see predators. It's like Fort Prairie Dog. The mound of earth at the entrance helps to keep them from flooding. The nesting chamber is near the bottom of the burrow, and there are listening chambers located near the entrance of the burrow which allow prairie dogs to listen for predators before leaving the safety of the burrow. Number 2. Cathedral Termites DNA tests revealed that the ancestors of these ant colonized Australia three times in the past 20 million years or so. They evolved from wood to grass feeding as they adapted to significant environmental shifts, from arid conditions to woodlands and then to grassland habitats. Now a prominent feature down under in Australia, the mounds house millions of cathedral termites. A mound lives from 50 to 100 years and is thought that a single queen lives for the entire life of the mound. The mounds are built from a mixture of feces, mud, and wood which form a robust, waterproof, clay-like substance. The termites live underground which requires an oxygen supply and the mounds work like an air conditioning system, funneling air down to the colony below. A perfect home for the termite, the ultimate in sustainable climate control and some species build on a north-south axis. This enables the termites to maintain the consistent levels of warmth and humidity they require. And these cathedral termites are major contributors to the environment in the harsh, very wet to extremely dry cycles of the savanna woodlands. By channeling underground for grass, they create tunnels that help the soil retain moisture, and the rain is easily passed through the soil to further nourish life below. Number 1. Naked Mole Rat Colonies you social animals share the following four characteristics. Adults live in groups, cooperative care of juveniles, meaning individuals care for a brood that is not their own, reproductive division of labor, not all individuals get to mate, and overlap of generations. And naked mole rats are one of two animals that are eusocial, spending much of their lives underground in tight-knit societies centered around a dominant queen, kind of like some insects. Most naked mole rats function as workers, foraging for roots and tubers, fighting off predators and caring for pups. And like bees, naked mole rat colonies are ruled by a single, domineering queen. She breeds only with select male, producing a new litter every 80 days. The naked mole rat is full of strange abilities and adaptations. For starters, they're cold-blooded mammals. A naked mole rat looks like a wrinkly sausage with oversized teeth. Those mega incisors can operate independently. A naked mole rat can move each of its front teeth separately, like a pair of chopsticks. It spends all of its extraordinarily long life, short of air, in dark and overcrowded underground tunnels where it frequently eats its own poo. Those were 15 of the most amazing nests in the animal world part 2. Thanks for watching.